Hello everyone, it's Tyk here, and today we'll be diving into the Season 4 buffs and nerfs. We'll break down the patch notes, explore how they are affecting the meta, and offer up-to-date builds. Without further ado, let's jump right in. First up, let's talk about the Type 19. It got a big BSA buff, dropping from 21 to 18. This means we no longer have to rely on BSA attachments for the Type 19 giving us more room to use other attachments to improve different aspects of the gun and making it arguably the best flex AR in MP. Moving on to the swordfish, particularly focusing on the halberd magazine attachment, it got a 0.2 multiplier buff to the stomach hitbox, increasing it from 1.1 to 1.3. This tweak is significant as it elevates the swordfish from being off meta to a borderline meta choice. With this attachment, it can achieve a time to kill of 180 milliseconds all the way up to 40 meters, which is incredibly strong. After seeing much usage in both the ranked and the competitive scene, the ground has received yet another minor nerf. This time, its trace speed has been reduced from 3.16 to 3.07 meters per second. However, this nerf won't significantly impact the weapon's performance. The ground will continue to be an easy to use and reliable flex assault rifle option. Last but not the least, let's talk about the Mana War. The newly introduced termite ammo added this season has received a damage radius nerf, decreasing it from 0.65 meters to 0.45 meters. This adjustment is a welcome change as it aims to balance the conversion ammo. Previously, it was quite frustrating to face, almost guaranteeing that if hit twice by the enemy even if you manage to eliminate them. Additionally, the termite sticking to your face was disorienting. This tweak should make the encounters with this ammo type more reasonable and less overwhelming. Moving on to the SMGs, let's discuss the Cordite. It has received a flesh buck, decreasing from 1.2 to 0.8. This translates to a 33.34% reduction in flinch, which is greatly welcome. This adjustment allows the Cordite to excel in mid-range gunfights, which is previously hindered by its high hit flinch, although it still suffers from high initial recoil. The MSMC receives a significant buff with a 0.2 multiplier increase to both the head and chest hits, making them 1.3 and 1.2 respectively. While this might seem substantial, it won't greatly impact the weapon's performance at range since hitting the chest and head hitboxes is already quite challenging. However, the MSMC also gets a hipfire spread buff, aligning it more closely with the Fenex hipfire spread. This adjustment is sure to enhance the gun's close reach performance, making it much more viable in MP. Now, let's talk about the Type 9. It received a 2 meter range buff to both its first and second range, increasing them from 10 and 20 to 12 and 22 respectively. Although this may seem minor, the Type 9 is already a powerful SMG in both multiplayer and battle royale modes, and this buff only solidifies its dominance even further. In addition to the range buff, the Type 9 also gets a significant buff exclusive to battle royale. This buff comes in the form of a major hipfire spread reduction decreasing it from 180-120 to an impressive 80-40. This change is somewhat overkill since it is already carried by its unparalleled time to kill when fully kitted out, referred to our TAC-9 in that. So you can expect it to be undoubtedly the best option for BR. Next in line for a buff is the MAC-10. It's been granted a minor range increase of 1 meter to both its first and second range. While this buff isn't game changing, it's still appreciated. The MAC-10 has been lagging behind other high fire rate SMGs like the Fennec, the QXR with the Enhanced Bolt, and the CX-9. This adjustment helps the MAC-10 keep pace and remain competitive in the SMG category. The last SMG that is getting changed is the CBR-4. Some of you may be getting your PTSD triggered from its 1.5 year reign, but you don't have to worry all too much. The gun has only been given a slight head finish buff, decreasing from 1.1 to 1, and a strafe buff, increasing from 3.69 to 3.9 meters per second. These adjustments bring the CBR's mobility more in line with the other SMG options but won't impact its range performance. Now, diving into the heart of the update, we have everyone's beloved Russian general purpose machine gun, the PKM, receiving a rather substantial buff that impacts multiple aspects of the weapon. Firstly, the lower arms multiplier has been increased from 1 to 
This enhancement enables the PKM to achieve a 3 shot kill up to the second range, requiring either 2 shots to the entire arms or chest, or a single headshot. Next, the bullet spread accuracy is being improved from 20 to 18, bringing it more in line with main assault rifles and enhancing the consistency of 3 shot kills. And lastly, the hit pinch has been reduced from 0.8 to 0.65. This adjustment allows the BKM to effectively compete in mid to long range gunfights, as splinch is no longer as problematic as it was before. Overall, these changes are expected to elevate the PKM's position in the meta tier list, placing it on par with, if not surpassing, the UL in certain situations. Another LMG receiving a significant buff is the S36. It receives a damage increase in its second range, going from 23 to 24, along with a 0.1 multiplier boost to the lower arms, matching it with the upper arms and chest at 1.1. With these adjustments, the S36 can now achieve a 4 shot kill up to the second range, landing 2 out of 4 shots to the entire arms or chest. With attachments, this range can be extended to almost 54 meters, making it very competitive, especially in multiplayer. This same change will also be applied to Battle Royale where the S36 is already considered the strongest full auto weapon. This buff will make it even more formidable, with the potential to kill in 880 milliseconds for up to infinite meters if 5 out of 12 shots land above the legs. For context, that is the time to kill of the AK-47 at point blank. We can anticipate the S36 gaining more popularity outside of Battle Royale, marking the first time in 4 years that it will be competitive again in multiplayer. This season, the Tundra received a minor nerf, specifically to its breath hold time, reduced from 6 seconds to 2.5. This adjustment was necessary as the Tundra previously boasted the highest breath hold time among all snipers and marksmen by a considerable margin. The overall performance of the weapon remains unchanged, as the main issue was the fast ADS time paired with the low flinch, meaning that it is still the best bolt action rifle. The packs from the Vulture Perk have received another boost in healing, now granting an additional 10 HP, increasing from 30 to 40. This enhancement follows a previous adjustment from 20 to 30, further solidifying Vulture as a decent quick fix alternative. This makes it particularly appealing for aggressive players aiming for longer streaks. For some god-forbidden reason, Persistence received a buff reducing the score multiplier penalty from 2 to 1.8. This will make score streaks even easier to obtain as they will be effectively 10% cheaper. So yeah, respawns will be even more painful to play. Alert has been revamped to detect enemies in a swift 200 milliseconds, down from the previous 800 milliseconds. This adjustment provides you with crucial extra time to react to enemy pings on the minimap, enhancing your situational awareness and response capabilities. The activation point environments for Havoc and Death Machine have been reduced, resulting in a quicker charge up time. This adjustment makes them more appealing choices over other operator skills, enticing players with their faster availability during gameplay. The score streak requirement for the gunship has received a reduction, decreasing from 2000 to 1900. The Guardian has been bolstered with a significant buff to its hit points, boosting its health from 450 to 600. This substantial increase in durability enhances the Guardian's effectiveness as a tool for error denial. That wraps up all the balance changes in the Season 4 update. What are your thoughts on these changes? Are there any other weapons you believe could use a buffer nerf? Share your comments with us down in the comment section. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful and consider subscribing for more content like this. This is Tyke, going dark.